The day he was born, he was such a small, helpless baby lying in my arms. Joseph was so proud. As we sat there among the shepherds and the farm animals, we knew it was true. This tiny baby, this precious gift of God, was going to be our savior. I remember how scared I had been when the angel had visited me and told me that I would be with child, with Jesus. I wasn't anyone special, and I prayed that God would protect me, but then suddenly a strange peace came over me. I knew it must be so. Maybe it is just a simple mother's pride, and maybe it was real, but Jesus really was different. So many miracles, the people, the crowds. We hardly had any time to ourselves. These past weeks have gone by so fast. First our entry into Jerusalem with all the people shouting and worshiping him. The stories he told us, the temple, the Passover meal, the garden, his arrest, the trial and the beating by the soldiers. So much, so much, I can't make sense of it all. As I looked up at him on that cross, my heart was so heavy. But then, just like so many years ago, a peace settled over me, that same peace I had known the night that he was conceived, and again by the manger when he was born. I knew this was God's plan. A special prayer came to my lips. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant, for behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Truly, he is the promised one. Truly, he is.
I remember all of it, how I always questioned our master. I will not deny you, I said. If I must die with you, I will not deny you. Those were my words. We all pledged the same. Death before denial, we said, death before denial. There were many discussions in those last days. Our Passover supper was more than just a celebration. He broke bread with us. This is my body, he said. And then he raised his cup. Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. But we just did not understand. And then when he said that one of us would betray him that very night, we all asked one after another, is it I? Is it I? Then Judas said, surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, you have said so. I, I still don't understand. How could this be? Jesus looked at us, at me. You will all fall away, he said. I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. No, others may fall away. Not I, Lord, I told him. Even though they fall away, I will not. Jesus told me. I would deny him that very night, not once, but three times. Three times before the rooster crows twice. No, I would never deny my master. At the garden, Judas arrived with the priests and the Romans. Judas kissed him. A kiss? Judas? They grabbed at Jesus. I lashed out in anger. My sword lifted the ear from someone, a priest or servant. My world was spinning with fear and anger. No more of this, said Jesus. He touched the wounded man and healed him. And then they were gone. I followed as close as I could, trying to work my way into the crowd. They gathered around a fire in a courtyard outside the home of Annas. I huddled in close to the fire for warmth. A servant girl looked up at me. This man was with him. And the words bolted from my mouth, Woman, I do not know him. And I pulled away from the fire. Drawn to another small group, a man stopped and studied my face. You're one of them. I am not and quickly moved across the courtyard. I waited and waited. An hour passed when I heard, aren't you from Galilee? I saw you at the garden with him. Panic set in. I don't know what you're talking about. And I spun away and there, there he stood, Jesus. And I heard the rooster crow and and he looked at me, and I wept, bitter tears. And I left. So much I didn't understand. I do remember, this is my body. This is my blood, our covenant. Truly, he is our savior. Truly, he is. Thank you.
I'm not sure what had compelled me to watch them take the Galilean to the place they called the Skull, Golgotha. Maybe it is because I'm also a Jew in my home of Cyrene. Maybe, like so many other people who were there that day, it was just curiosity to see for myself what and who this Jesus of Nazareth was all about. As I stood there among all the others, I watched as Jesus, bloodied, and in obvious pain, fell with a cross on his back. The soldiers around him whipped and kicked him, screaming, Get up! Get up! You're almost there! I remember hearing that Jesus had told his followers, Pick up your cross and follow me. How ironic that he was carrying his own cross to his death. Like life itself, carrying that cross was far from being a light joke. But Jesus went on carrying it until finally, tortured and hurt beyond human endurance, he seemed unable to go on. That's when one of the soldiers turned to me and shouted, You! Get out here and carry this cross the rest of the way! He pushed me to where Jesus lay, barely able to move, and forced me to pick up that cross. As I bent over to lift it from Jesus' back, he looked up at me. I expected to see pain and a man defeated, but what I saw was different. Yes, he was in pain, but yet there was a look of peace on his face, determination and love. I cannot fully describe it. I knew at that moment that this man, this Jesus, was in fact everything people said he was. I carried that cross the rest of the way. Then, when we reached the hill, the cross was taken from me and I was pushed back into the crowd. I looked back and could almost see a smile forming on the face of the man who they say was our king. Yes, truly, he is our Messiah.
Captain of 100. That is what my title of Centurion means. I rose up the ranks, first as a foot soldier. Then, as I proved my loyalty and courage, I was promoted to an officer. As I stood under the three crosses, I could not help but notice that this man Jesus was different than the others. I didn't even know why we were putting him to death. He was no criminal or rebel. In fact, from what I heard, he was just the opposite, preaching love and kindness. They say he had performed miracles, healing the lame, the blind, and even bringing the dead back to life. We beat him, we mocked him, and made him wear a crown of thorns. We nailed him to a cross, and then, as he hung there, my men gambled for his clothing. We hung a sign over his head, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, it said. We continued to taunt him. If you're a king and you save people, why not save yourself? It was awful. At one point, I saw him look to the sky and say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Who is this man talking to? Who was this father in heaven? Why did he ask for forgiveness when we had treated him so brutally? I don't understand it. I really don't. It took this man Jesus six hours to die. And just before he did, I remember that moment even now, he spoke to this father of his again. Then the whole sky went dark, even though it was the middle of the day. The earth started shaking. I was really scared. And then he just seemed to give up his life. I'd never seen a death like it. Right at the very last moment, just before this Jesus died, when the sky went dark and the earth beneath me moved, I saw his lips moving, and I'm sure, absolutely sure, he was whispering my name. It's as if he knew me, as if he knew all of us that stood there at the foot of this cross. I felt a sudden sadness for what we had done. Truly, this man was the Son of God.
My heart was broken the day I saw you die. Now, as every hour passes, I can't help but cry. How could they do this to you, my friend? That was two days ago. Early this morning, I and one of the other women took the spices we had prepared and went to the tomb. When we were very close to the tomb, it looked like the stone had already been moved away from the entrance. I panicked. We began to run towards the tomb, and as we got nearer, our fears were confirmed. The stone had been rolled away. I took a quick look inside to find that it was empty. I fell to my knees and cried out, No! Why have they taken him? He was doing no harm. Why couldn't they just leave him alone? Was it not enough that they took him away from us when they killed him, but now they have taken his body away too? As we slowly walked out of the tomb, tears ran down my face. I turned back to take one last look. I was amazed and somewhat puzzled when I saw two angels sitting there, one at the foot and one at the head of where Jesus' body had been laid. One of the angels spoke to me. Why are you crying? He said. I replied to him, Why am I crying? I'm crying because they have taken my friend Jesus' body away and now I don't know where he is. Then I turned away from the angel to see a man standing there. I did not recognize him but thought he was the gardener. He said to me, Why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? I replied, have you taken him? If so, tell me where he is now so that I can go and get him. Then he said softly, Mary. I could not believe it. Teacher? It was him. It was our beloved friend Jesus. But how? How could this be? I saw them crucify him. I had helped take him from the cross and put him in the tomb. Was I dreaming? Then he told me, Quickly go to my disciples and tell them that it is time for me to return to my Father, to my God and your God. I still could hardly believe it, but as soon as I heard the words, I ran as fast as I could to where the disciples were. I could hardly wait to tell them the news. Let me in quickly, oh please let me in. I know you will never believe me, but I have seen the Lord. Hallelujah, oh what a wonderful morning. I don't know how, but I have seen him. Truly, he is risen from the dead.
name is Thomas. I was one of the followers of Jesus. Maybe you know me, maybe not. If you do, it's probably with the nickname Doubter attached. I've been saddled with that name for a long time. There is truth in it, yes, but there is more to my story than what the nickname implies. Now I'll spare you the details. Maybe you know them. The betrayal, the torture, the mock trial, the agonizing death on that horrible cross, the burial in Joseph's tomb. After that, I kind of stopped dreaming. He was gone, finally gone. I felt like a man who had been hollowed out. I was beyond grief. There was nothing left of me. I began to question everything I had done for the last three years. But you know, I still wanted to believe. All the things that he had said and done and stood for, Jesus was dead. I would never speak to him again. I would never again embrace him and laugh with him or break bread with him. None of us except Mary stayed at the cross. None of us would admit to knowing him. All I had said about going to die with him just evaporated. I was afraid, really afraid. And when Mary told us she had seen the Lord, I just could not believe her. No way, I said. I don't believe your story. I don't know why you're telling me this. It's just messing with my head. I want to see the marks of the nails on his hands, and I want to put my finger in the holes. That's so much proof you are going to have to give me. Now get out of here. Show me Jesus or you'll never see me again. Then a week later, we gathered there in this room, and it happened. Jesus came in. He stood among us big as life. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. He held out his hands. I stared at them for a moment, at the dried scars on his wrists. He opened his tunic on his side and showed me the place where the spear had gone into his skin. And then he took my hand by the finger and he poked it into the hole in his other wrist. He placed my hand over that gaping hole in his side. For a moment I was speechless. Finally, I found some words. They were the only words I could possibly say. I looked him in the eye and said, My Lord and my God! Then Jesus spoke to me. Have you believed because you have seen me? He turned from me and to the others. He said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. I wish all of you could have been with me. Those scars, those words, that encounter has changed my life forever. But then maybe you can believe without seeing. Truly, he is the one who has defeated death. I do not wear my sin or shame They have all been washed away Gone are the doubts of yesterday I am held in perfect peace Your covenant is keeping
I was afraid. I denied him. I was curious. I was an unbeliever. I was lost. I doubted. Truly, Truly he is. written all over your face. 